thank you all for joining. Uh, my name's Jordan and I'll be our host today and I'll do a little introduction of myself in a few minutes with some of our other guests on screen here. Um, today is all about eSight4, uh, what we have to present to you. Um, it's going to be a great day. We're going to hear from some uh, really great people all together. Um, and uh, I think we should go ahead and get started. So uh, the very first thing, just an introduction on what we're doing today. I'm gonna go through who we have on the call. What is eSight? Um, we're gonna have our special guests talk about our vision for eSight 4, uh, as well as some of the clinical findings behind eSight in general. Um, and then finally, I'll walk us through an eSight 4 demonstration and some questions and answers from all of you. So as you come about questions, please put them into the chat. We'll be monitoring as it goes about. Um, and if you do have questions for the end, you'll be able to ask them live for everyone to go ahead and hear. Um, so first things first, uh, I'll start with the least important myself. Um, my name's Jordan. Uh, I am the clinical account manager here at eSight. I've been working at eSight for almost three years and um, know many of the faces and names that I see online today and hope to get to know many more of you. I work with our clinics, low vision organizations, partnerships, um, anyone who may work with individuals living with, with low vision. Uh, it is my job to make sure you have what you need to be successful for them, the equipment you need, the uh, collateral you may need. Additionally, we have uh, Charles, our chief technology officer. Charles, how's it going? Good, good. Thank you for having me, Jordan. Absolutely. And uh, Charles is going to talk to us quite a bit today about um, really just the basics of what eSight is and, and how it's come to be. Um, and then finally, we're really, really thrilled to have Dr. Scott, Scott Gartner with us, uh, who's a low vision specialist um, for the Lighthouse for the Blind, Palm Beaches, and Miami. Dr. Scott Gartner, thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you for inviting me. And I've been involved with eSight, I think, since the beginning. So I'm excited about how far it has come over the last five years. So looking forward to this today. Thanks so much, Dr. Gartner. Um, I think what would be great, uh, very first thing, as much as I'm our host today, uh, the other people on this call have quite a bit more to talk about. Um, so I think I'm gonna pass things over right away over to Charles to talk a little bit about um, our technology, where it's come to be, um, and really just a little bit more about our story and into the tech itself. So Charles, uh, the floor is yours. Perfect. Thank you very much, Jordan. Thank you, everyone. It's really a pleasure to have everyone over here to talk about such powerful technology. And it's truly an honor to also have you, Dr. Gartner. I really, really appreciate it. So let me share with you guys um, a little bit about eSight and myself and how we got, got started. Um, eSight is founded by um, Conrad Lewis, our founder. He is a brilliant engineer and a successful entrepreneur, has actually made a lot of money out of my talent that fell a communication space and he had two sisters with Stargard's disease. So he always wanted to figure out a way to help his sisters out. So he actually spent lots of his own money and years of R&D to actually develop a product to actually help his sisters out. So long behold, after years of massive development and breakthroughs, we have actually successfully launched eSight. eSight is a breakthrough device and technology. And it's been seen by more than 100 million people worldwide. We are also winners of multiple awards, as you can see below. Most notably, Time Magazine, we won 2017's Best Invention. So I would like to say that eSight has actually pioneered the low vision tech market. And I think we're the first ones to actually create it. And this is coming from someone who has done a lot of high tech developments, whether it's for entertainment, telecommunications, or even the aerospace. So I'm very proud to be a part of eSight. I think it's a great story. The ability to use technology to help people improve their quality of life is nothing but amazing. So with that said, Jordan, let's move over to the next slide. So I'll share with you a little bit more about um, eSight in general, and more specifically eSight 4 as well. So eSight, we are the leaders in low vision technology. 
it's the premier solution if you have low vision. And let me explain why. We are an end-to-end -end solutions provider. And that means we take care of industrial design, mechanical design, electronic design, firmware design, optics and lenses, software, mobile and cloud. That is a lot of engineering disciplines right then and there, my friends. And what that means for us is we are able to put the user as the main point of contact. What that means is we are able to develop something that the users really like, of which not a lot of players can do that. We can customize the design to make sure that we provide best visual acuity, unmatched mobility, and ease of use. So think of it this way. If you wanted to design a high-end sports car, if you're only designing the tires or the engine or the body, you won't get very far. But because we at eSight build the whole thing, we can streamline everything to make sure that we are providing the best actual value for all of our users. And for that, I'm very proud of that. And our main sole focus is to provide better, superior quality of life to our users. That is the main objective. Let's move on to the next slide, Jordan. So with that said, how does eSight work? Well, from a high level standpoint, without getting into too much of the details, eSight pow is powered by our advanced camera sensors. We also have proprietary algorithms that then allows the images to be displayed in our high brightness and high contrast displays before it goes to our patented near eye optics. And what this thing all does is it basically scans the remaining photoreceptors in the user's eyes to provide more visual information to the brain, whether it's temporal, spatial, spectral. The brain then uses a lot more of this visual information and convolves them with the two eyes to help compensate for the blind spot of the user. So you can think of it as you have advanced TV screens in front of your eyes that are providing a lot more visual information, allowing the brain to see more than it otherwise would. And this is all patented. And I'm proud to say we have more than 60 patent filings, of which there's 14 patent families, six active trademark families as well. So this is a well-known technology for us that we're very proud of to build on over at eSight. And with regards to the different eye conditions that we support, I'll pass it back to you, Jordan. Maybe you can share with some of our users some of the different conditions that we support. Absolutely, and, and Charles, thanks for, for explaining so much of the story behind eSight. Um, again, for everyone on, on the line, um, I'm not a clinician by any stretch of the imagination, and uh, Dr. Gartner will attest for that as well as everyone else, but I have had the privilege of working with so many doctors, low vision specialists across uh, North America and a few internationally to really understand who eSight is best suited for. Um, what's really interesting is that eSight is almost uh, a one size fits all solution um, for a variety of eye conditions. What we like to say is that eSight doesn't necessarily discriminate based on eye condition. There are definitely some that work better than others and we'll go over that in a little more detail on the next slide. But when you think of vision loss, uh, because of the way the algorithms and prisms interact, we're really looking for individuals who have central vision loss, macular degeneration, Stargardt's disease, atrophies, albinism, an optic nerve hypoplasia. All of these combine to finding the right person uh, who can benefit from eSight. Now, what's really interesting to note is that's a wide spectrum. There are millions and millions of people, in just a quick stat over there, 7 million plus people in the United States affected by low vision. But there are specific criteria that we've seen time and time again, and that we actually developed over the course of our eQuest study, um, our clinical validation study, which we'll talk about shortly as well. Um, we're looking for people, for your patients, that have a best corrected visual acuity of about 20 over 60 to 20 over 800. Um, we have seen it expand beyond that range 
even up to 20 over 1400 in certain cases uh, that can then be improved all the way down to 20 over 20 or similar simulated 20 over 20. We're also looking at individuals with a greater field of view than 15 degrees. And that's just basically because of those prisms, we wanna make sure we're focusing and magnifying that light and energy uh, so it has an entire range. And for those of us at home, we all know, easy test that I like to do over the phone when doing telehealth screenings, simply placing your arms out in front of you, wiggling your pinkies and making sure you can see those or holding a piece of paper up at arm's length horizontally, making sure you can see all of the edges. Some other pieces to note, we have an age range that we look at, 13 to 80, but there's never any criteria around that. It's just a, a guideline altogether. Obviously, we know those individuals who are more often than not above the age of 80 um, do suffer from technological potential impairments, uh, but doesn't stop them a lot of time. I actually have been working with lately a 96-year-old woman who is vibrant and healthy and excited to keep going forward with eSight. Um, Jordan, I, I even have a 93-year-old patient I'm working with now that is doing great with it. So, yeah, age really is only a factor in terms of their limitations. I couldn't agree more. And it's, it's the people that want to go forward and try things um, that are the ones that are the most successful. Um, I do want to talk a little bit about um, our study. And, and this is where you know, I'm going to definitely lean on Dr. Scott Gartner here quite a bit. Um, back uh, when we were first evaluating how eSight could be successful in a clinical environment, uh, we partnered up with six major institutions um, and we were able to create a, a study around clinical validation of eSight um, where most people, the average uh, lines of improvement on the eye chart were seven. Uh, 12 letter contrast improvement. And the most important, at least in our eyes here at eSight, is 100% mobility retained. The ability to still have your natural native peripheral vision um, to be able to walk around and be mobile. And I think, um, Dr. Gartner, I'd love to just pick on your brain here. I think it'd be great for you to explain um, to everyone here what did that study really comprise of? Uh, who was there and, and what were some of the successes that you saw yourself? Okay. Uh, yeah, the study was was a very uh, well planned and thought out study. I was glad to be part of it, and I sent a mailing out to some of my patients. And within two weeks, I got about thirty five people who were interested in in joining the study. Um, now, each we were limited to like ten to fifteen uh, participants in each study. I did 15, um, which, which was probably one of the most. Uh, I had a lot of patients that were very interested in it and qualified for it. Uh, but the interesting thing is I had patients from the age of 14 to about 85 with all different eye conditions. And I even had one patient that had retinitis pigmentosis. I saw you didn't list that, you know, on your list of diseases that it's helpful for. And usually because retinitis pigmentosis, the patients have a limited field of view, it doesn't always work well. But this one patient was probably at right around 10 to 15 degrees, but the enhancement in the contrast really made a, a big difference, you know, for that patient and, and she loved it. But just seeing all the patients who did get involved in the study, I, I had so many different types of, of people from students. I had one 16 year old girl uh, that was an albino. And I find with most of my low vision different devices, uh, the albinos are probably the most successful type of patient. And these I just, you know, show the same type of result where she went from 2400 vision to about 2030 vision and she was a horseback rider and she I'll never forget the story she told me about you know riding her horse 
and she even did jumps over the uh, the equestrian uh, race that she she had. So you know a lot of a lot of interesting stories. Um, so just how amazing how it helped these people become more independent and felt you know that they could do so much more because of the device was was quite quite interesting you know that I found out and like you said the one uh, area that the east side has over other head mounted display systems is that you can be 100% mobile you could be looking underneath it for for walking around and then just tilt your head down to see the magnification and improvement in contrast where other devices you really can't get up and start walking with uh, because it limits your peripheral vision. That's fantastic. And, and I mean, sharing that story of, of our, our horseback riders, always one of our favorites. Um, <laughs> just, to, just to ask a little bit more as well, um, since we have you on here, um, you know, from some of the other groups as well, did you see a lot of similarities in, in the groupings of people and then also their results um, I knew I know we're looking at the charts and the graphs that that explain right. a little bit more about that. But um, in your conversations with the other members of the study, um, you know, what were some of those really interesting findings that you found um, super interesting for you? Right, and and that's where the, the like you said, central field loss. This device works exactly as you would expect it to from a scientific point of view. If they're 2200 and they magnify it 10 times, they're going to get down to 2020. A lot of eye, other eye diseases, usually there's other factors, you know, in play, and they may only get to 2040, 2050 vision. So I did find macular degeneration patients as a group did very well with it. The optic atrophy, and I had a couple patients with Lieber's optic atrophy, uh, they got improvement, but not as great of amount as, as expected. And if I magnify it 10 times, they probably only got five times improvement in the vision. But then because of the contrast enhancements, you know, that, that helped quite a bit. Now, an interesting part of the study was on facial recognition. And as we know, facial recognition is more of a contrast problem because faces are low contrast uh, targets. So just increasing the magnification. So when I use a telescopic device, they may not notice they see faces that much better. But when you enhance the contrast, then they could see uh, the, the different emotions that the patient had. And that was was an interesting fact that I that I found that making it bigger didn't really improve their ability to recognize the different emotions. But when they played around with the enhancement contrast, they did really see the different emotions probably 80% of the time. And that was a pretty tough test. I remember going through there's 24 different emotions that they had to choose from and and, uh, you know, with the contrast enhancement, they did do, you know, quite, quite better. The other interesting thing was with some of the, because the study was a three month study and the acuities, both distance and near, pretty much stayed the same from the first day to the third month, you know, when we had them back, that acuity measurements were just as good uh, at the beginning, as as the end, as they started to use the device, the activities of daily living did seem that they needed time with the device to learn how to use it, to localize and fixate on objects. Because one of the things I would have them do is go to a store and try to find the Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. And at the beginning, they would probably spend 10 minutes just trying to scan the supermarket aisle and three months later they could really find it a lot a lot better and a lot easier so that was an interesting part you know to see how 
training with the device really did make make a difference, you know, on some aspects, especially the daily living activities. And, and just one wrap up question, because that I think gives us a lot more understanding of how the study was conducted and, and what we saw. Um, was there a reason that we chose Frosted Flakes versus Cheerios? Because I'm much more partial to Cheerios. You are? Uh, no, it was just random. I'm more partial to Frosted Flakes, so, so that's the one I used. Fantastic. Well, Dr. Gardner, this has been, this has been great on the clinical validation um, piece. It, it gives me more understanding knowing I've been working here for two years and just those findings and, and the, uh, the emotion charts I think is great. And just want to be able to show everyone else as well, um, you know, who we worked with. It was a really great study altogether, um, fantastic all around. And as much as we have, you know, uh, our doctors here explaining um, what they were able to do for their patients during that study, I think it's also really important to note, um, you know, the outcomes from our low vision patients. Um, you know, I know all three of these individuals quite extensively. Um, and when I got to sit down with Gary, uh, just on the page here, he said, with eSight, I do anything that anyone else in the office does. I'm just another guy in the office. Um, Zara says she uses eSight if she's looking at a slideshow in school. Uh, just absolutely fantastic altogether. These stories that come out every single day, as much as we are a tech company, we are still, you know, person oriented. Um, just like all of you are in it for the patients, that's what we are all here for too. Um, I want to move things over back actually to Charles, just to talk about how eSight 4 came to be. And obviously you see lots of photos and pictures and we'll be doing a demonstration shortly, but how we got to that point is super important and super, uh, I think just a really great story altogether. So Charles, if you could take the floor here, that'd be fantastic. Thank you very much, Jordan. Thank you, Dr. Gardner. That is definitely uh, very interesting information. Mm -hmm. um, so for us, in terms of the vision for eSight 4, it all really boils down to improving the quality of life for our users. Uh, that's really what we wanna do. We wanna make them feel as independent as possible, um, feel empowered to do what they normally love, whether it's their hobbies, their daily activities, work, spending time with family. So eSight is going to be the platform that improves and changes the lives of our users. That is our main goal. So, you know, we understand we're a clinically validated solution that provides an enhanced improved vision to all of our users, which is great, but we don't want to stop there. Basically, anything that can improve the quality of life of our users is fair game for us. So we want to, of course, make sure that we focus on key areas such as vision, mobility, ease of use, but more importantly, comfort, all day use. How do we bring a sense of independence, a sense of community? How do we make sure that devices future-proof and has continuous improvement are all the uh, part of eSight 4's uh, future for us? And then Charles, if you wanna just let us know, you know, the timelines, what things really came to be, um, I think it would be great for everyone to understand where we came from too. Yeah, no, for sure. Thank you, Jordan. So eSight 4 has been in development for approximately two years now. And it has been a development that was designed with the low vision community for the low vision community. And I wanna emphasize that because at the end of the day, we at eSight will not be here if it was not for our users. So we took basically as much time as possible to understand what our users want. So we did multiple surveys, analysis, tests, there were iterations of multiple 3D printed parts that would come in. And I remember that we would strap them on to our actual users back then, and they would give us feedback on comfort, mobility, ease of use, bioptic tilt. But it didn't stop there. We also took a look at the UI, the UX, how we can minimize the steps, automate as much of it to make it as easy to use for all of our users. And the culmination of that is, of course, the launch of eSight 4 that we successfully launched um, last month. So we very much appreciated 
all of the input from the low vision community and all of the stakeholders in the low vision community. I think we will not be here without your help. So thank you very much for that. Um, and here's some of the interesting aspects that we have found uh, from working with, of course, the low vision community. Um, there's four key things that resonate very much. One is visual acuity. Two is mobility. Three is comfort. Four is ease of use. And what we have done for that is we have improved the visual acuity for eSight 4 such that it is actually better than eSight 3. On top of that, we have built it so that it allows for you to use your own personal eyeglasses if you do have one prescription. That way you can be comfortable and you can still benefit from the vision enhancement from eSight 4. eSight 4 also has better autofocus and better auto exposure algorithms to allow you to see better clearly and sharper. And because of the better camera sensor and lens matching, we are able to provide you more detail in low light conditions and also better color matching. Mobility. We wanted to make sure that we keep our users as mobile as possible because no one wants to be stuck at a single location all day. So we wanted to make it wireless. The battery is hot swappable so that you can use them all day, eight hours or longer if you'd like. We wanted to retain the bioptic tilt so that you can actually make sure that you can then use your eye to eye contact with your actual family if you're talking to them or friends, which would be great. And uh, the next one is comfort. So we have actually built the design so that it's comfortable to wear. So it has a halo comfort band. The weight was relatively balanced. We have full adjustability all the way from the halo that Jordan was adjusting. The temple arms that would allow you to move it forward and backwards to keep it as close or as far as possible for you as well. Um, and what's interesting for us is as we were doing this, um, one of our users actually mentioned that he didn't even realize the eSight 4 was on his head until more than three hours later when they had to replace the battery. So that's a great achievement thanks to the low vision community. And of course, we also wanted to make sure that we took into account ease of use. We have a wide range of users, all the way from kids as young as five years old to the more senior members of the community. And to make that happen, we wanted to make sure that we have an embedded touchpad into the actual device. So Jordan can show that as well. And that touchpad, basically, if you don't bring anything else and you only have your eSight 4 device, you can use your device already. All of the main controls to control it are there. If you'd like to access a little bit more, we have access to our Bluetooth controller, which is also wireless. And that allows you to have a little bit more capability access for your eSight 4. And of course, for our more technologically more savvy users, we also have a mobile app that allows you to do even more with your eSight 4 device and unlocks a lot of other cool features that pretty much only eSight has. So these are some of the most important capabilities that we over at eSight have pretty much built to make sure that our users are able to use it to improve their quality of life. So if you move over to the next slide, you're going to see that eSight 4 is essentially the culmination of everything that we have learned from eSight 3 and all of the feedback that we have gotten over the last two years. So eSight 4 is built from the breakthroughs that we have from eSight 3. And it also fixes a lot of the requests that we have had from the low vision community to make sure that eSight 4 is ready for the future. And it's also future proofed because of its connectivity back to the cloud that allows us to provide seamless cloud updates to all of our users in the field. With that, I think it'll be great if my colleague Jordan can actually do a product demo for us to showcase over to you the full capabilities of eSight 4. Absolutely. And uh, Charles, thanks so much for that. One thing I was told to mention um, 
This is just my headset. This wire is only coming from my computer. So eSight is completely wireless. And what I'll actually do first, um, is it'll make it a little bit easier for everyone to see. Um, I'm gonna spotlight myself here, a little bit of an ego guy myself. Um, but I'm gonna talk about some of those adjustment pieces, demonstrate a little bit about what Charles was saying. So first things first, um, I wanna talk about our form factor, beautiful halo design, uh, completely wireless. Um, might be a little bit heavier uh, in, in just, you know, grams and ounces compared to the eSight 3, but that all day comfort design is so key. Um, I've been wearing it probably two or three hours a day for, for all the di different clinics that have been working with me. Um, I wanna show three main adjustment points just so everyone can get their understanding of what this does. Uh, the first main adjustment point is our halo band as we were showing before. This tightens or loosens the head size. Now, I am someone on the 15th percentile of head sizes, so I'm very happy that we can tighten it enough and get it onto my head. But we also have a couple of colleagues who have their much bigger heads. Uh, they are really, really smart guys, I like to say. Um, for those individuals, if the head size can't be adjusted quite enough, the Velcro is actually detachable, so we can get it onto quite a few more heads. The second most important piece for adjustment here is those armbands. Now, these are both adjustable uh, independently, but we like to rotate them together. And this will allow on the eSight 4 to fit your existing prescription glasses underneath. Uh, no need for eSight to create you a, a prescription for any patient you may need. And what we've noticed is that many patients can actually bring the screens closer to their eyes for almost a larger perception of view, although the field of view stays the same, they can bring those screens quite a bit closer. Now the last piece of adjustment, uh, and that's part of our technology as well, are the actual prisms themselves. We've added some comfort and some actual ridges on here for tactile purposes so that patients can move these back and forth and find that sweet spot altogether. Um, the last thing I'll mention before putting it on and sharing my screen to show you what I can see. Um, we were talking a little bit about our beautiful hot swappable batteries. We have a nice light indicator. Everyone knows green means good, red means bad. So as long as these are charged, we can get them in actually in almost any orientation uh, for anyone who needs to swap those batteries. And the device will stay on for about 10 or so minutes uh, as you're changing things. So what I'm going to do now, I'm actually gonna get connected to my eSight device. Um, we have the ability to support anyone and everyone uh, who is connected to the internet um, and gives us the ability to connect to their device, see what they are seeing, um, and then go ahead and uh, help them along the way if they are having any troubles. So I'm gonna go ahead and share that right now. And here we are. So what you are currently seeing is what I'm seeing. Now, one thing I'll mention is that on my side of things, this is running at a smooth, thir smooth 30 frames per second. Because we have the eSight going through uh, the internet to our support system and then through Zoom one more time, it may look a little choppy on your side, but I can assure you it's perfectly crisp and crystal clear. That is not any kind of sales technique or a lie. Uh, it really is just a matter of those extra internet pieces. Now, what I wanna show you, um, just looking around my room over here, we have quite a clear picture of everything around. We have a beautiful eSight 4 box, uh, a lot more compact and ready to go. Um, and I'm gonna go through some of those main functions of our controller. So this controller is quite a bit easier to use. I'm gonna look over here just to show you. Um, it looks very similar to more of an Apple remote altogether. Uh, we have some buttons on the top and some buttons all around and every button does something a little different. The first one that I'm gonna show is our magnification. And you can see that not only are we magnifying, but it's focusing as we magnify more and more. We also have the ability to take away that magnification and magnify up to 24 times. An additional great feature, which I think is absolutely spectacular, is our spot zoom. So if we look here, just on my screen, this feature will allow us to spot zoom 
and take a look back. And actually we had a story just the other day of someone out in nature being able to track rabbits and deer in the wild uh, by quickly spot zooming and zooming back in on them all together. Um, on top of that, very similar to the eSight 3, we have our contrast options. So we can add that contrast in or take that contrast away. We also have the ability to not only save a photo by pressing a simple button, but we can also freeze the frame and I'll make a joke. Yes, it's supposed to be frozen on our screen. What we can do then is magnify even more and look around. And this is how we really teach anyone and everyone to start the reading um, on their front. It creates a much clearer image. They don't have to worry about the shakiness um, and they can keep going forward. Now, as Charles mentioned before, um, you know, there are some really great functions for those high contrast images. We can actually change these to our modes and filters. And what these are, are some presets that we have, as well as some filters for different environments. I've been doing this on all of my calls with everyone, but indoor mode is good for indoors, outdoor mode is good for outdoors, and so on and so forth. And these are all customizable in the menus themselves. And what you'll see is with these different modes, say we want an indoor mode um, and we're gonna work towards say a blue or a yellow, we can simply toggle that with just a few clicks of a button to be able to go through all together. Absolutely fantastic there. Now, if we forget our controller, um, maybe we left it at home. Charles mentioned that we have the touchpad. I'm actually gonna show you on the side here, I can very easily control my zoom and magnification as well as my contrast doesn't give me all the functionality but enough of the basics that i can go through all together um, and then finally the app uh, don't want to take up too too much time here on the app itself but the ability to transfer photos take videos um, be able to share your screen locally with someone around you with just a few clicks of a button is fantastic for demonstrating, allows for quite a bit more um, ability to transfer those images and, and be connected. Um, and I think that I would say is the basics of the eSight demonstration um, altogether. Um, I, I think what would be fantastic, I'm actually gonna flip back to our presentation and just explain a few more of those. And then I think it'll be a great time for the last 10 or 15 minutes just to start answering your questions um, as they have been coming about. So I'm going to do a quick new share here. Give me one sec. And back to our presentation. So um, all those different pieces, you know, they've been tested rigorously. I've had the pleasure of working with patients left, right, and center, um, really getting a lot out of the device. And you know, everything that Charles had mentioned, we're looking at that greater visual acuity um, to ensure a little bit more success with each and every patient that comes in. Um, we're really here for that unmatched mobility. As much as you're looking at me and it's covering my eyes, I'm actually able to simply tilt the device up, be able to walk around freely and use my native peripheral vision, which is synonymous with so many of our patients uh, in the community. Um, that comfort band, I got to say, like, like I said before, I'm wearing it two or three hours a day myself. And, and just as Charles' story said, people aren't noticing it as much um, while it may be a little bit bigger. That comfort is exactly what our users really, really wanted. Um, really easy to learn. As you saw, the learning curve is so much easier. It's a remote that looks similar to other remotes. It's a few clicks of a button. Um, and we have an unbelievable team here that actually works with every patient um, as needed all the way through. Um, you know, we're really ready for today's world. As I've shown you, there's the app that can be used for so many different pieces. Uh, there's also the ability to connect directly to the unit for HDMI um, and stream your images, stream your videos all together. Uh, and I think now would be a fantastic time um, to start answering some questions. So I'm gonna pull up the chat here um, and uh, I'm actually gonna stop sharing my screen just for a sec. So whoever's going to be spotlighted will do that. Um, depth perception issues, were there 
any uh, orientation or mobility specialist consulted. Um, Dr. Gartner, I, I think this might be a good question for you about that depth perception um, and the consultation there. Right. Now, when I uh, do training with the East site, I do have an occupational therapist and also a certified vision rehab specialist that will work with the patients and have them go outside, you know, do different uh, types of traveling and environmental uh, evaluations. So when, while they're looking through the device, they do they do lose depth reception because of the magnification, but there's, you know, monocular cues that they can use to help them know if there's a curb coming up, things like that. But with a O&M instructor, uh, I do have them actually go, you know, to their home environment and walk them. If they walk to the store or wait for the bus, I have them work with them on that. So it is important that the other specialties, you know, get involved in training the patient so they can, you know, get the maximum use out of the device. Great answer. And, and just to add on top of that, when it comes to the, um, the, the depth perception, um, you know, uh, we're, we're still working on some of those measurements. Um, there's definitely uh, enough depth perception for most activities, uh, but when it comes to specific walking, we always recommend tilting the device up just a little bit so that we can use our native peripheral vision um, as best we can. Um, uh, Dr. Christopher uh, Lawson, hi, nice to see you here, um, uh, has a question about what about a person with keratoconus uh, who has had a cornea transplant in one eye that failed in addition to having blood disorder uh, polycythemia? Um, I think I said that right. Um, Dr. Gardner, you can answer. I, I have some experience keratoconus in the back, past, but you go for All it. Right now, again, uh, now if they only have the the cornea transplant in one eye, you know, depending on what the other eye is, the the e site will definitely help the patient. Now, if they had a cornea transplant and their vision is reduced, again because of the contrast. Uh, the device is going to work very well because patients with cornea transplant, one of the main problems that they have is, is a lot of glare and they need to get that glare cut out, which the device is going to do because it is covering the eyes. But then they can also uh, use the contrast enhancement modes to you know, make it a lot easier to see. So to, if they have any vision left, the device is going to be able to help them. If it's an opaque cornea, if it's a fa totally failed uh, transplant, then it's not going to really give vision in that eye. But if they have any vision, then it is going to be helpful. Great. Yeah, that's a great answer. And, and again, we have those same screening criteria um, as best as possible. A lot of times, you know, Dr. Gartner will probably say too, you got to try it before you know if it's going to work or not as much as we can screen and screen and screen. There's just sometimes things that help and sometimes things that don't. Correct. Um, uh, Charles, a really great question for you from Regina. Um, hi, Regina. She asks, does the unit get warm with the new design? Um, and I think, Charles, you'll probably be the best to speak about the, the heat dissipation. Yeah, thank you, Jordan. And thank you for the question, Regina. So the cooling system at eSight 4 has been um, meticulously designed to make sure that the design actually does not get warm. So you will notice a significantly much better improvement with regards to temperature between eSight 3 and eSight 4. So the answer is uh, no, the unit does not get warm with the new design. Yeah, I'm able to place my hands pretty comfortably and I've been using it fairly extensively this morning. Uh, so pr pretty good to be able to to work on that dissipation. I know the team, Charles, you and the team worked a lot on making sure that it would be comfortable for, for all of the different patients and users. Yeah, exactly. Um, so we, we selected low power chips, made sure that the cooling system works and so on to make sure that our users such as Regina will not have this problem. Yeah, fantastic. Um, Amber asks, uh, what is the battery life and what is the uh, life of additional batteries? Also, can you share the cost and cost of additional batteries. Um, I'll be happy to answer this. So 
most of our batteries uh, when fully charged and normal regular use would probably last about two and a half to three hours. Um, additionally, any additional battery is the same. As long as they're charged, we can do that quick swap uh, and keep them in there for all day use. Uh, every e-site comes with two batteries um, and there are some available for additional purchase. Uh, the cost of the device currently um, for a, a user paying out of pocket is $5,950 US. Uh, we do have financing options available for patients that need it, um, as well as an entire team of reimbursement specialists, as well as fundraising coordinators um, who actually help potentially source the funds for corporate sponsorship uh, or work with the individual to find a, a payment plan that's going to be beneficial for them. Really great question, Amber, and I'm sure that was a lot of people's questions on here, so thank you for asking it. Um, Judy uh, mentioned about uh, showing people walking with the visor down. Um, for those pictures, actually, uh, what's really interesting is right now I have the visor down in front of my eyes. I can actually see underneath, yes, I'm fully sighted, uh, but for those with that peripheral or that central vision loss, uh, many individuals can still walk around freely. Um, I'm actually able to, to look underneath this quite easily at, at Charles's face here, which is which is great for me um, to be able to see. Um, one other question I see here uh, from Stephen, is there insurance coverage for patients to offset the cost uh, to patients? Um, the answer is we're working on it. Uh, it's definitely a little bit uh, complex right now, but we do actually have a team of uh, reimbursement specialists that will work with that patient. Um, you know, we have been covered by certain private insurers uh, and it's on a case by case basis. What we need um, from everyone in our community is to continue to build our case uh, and continue to prescribe accordingly. So we do have a team here that works on that each and every single day. Um, so thank you for that question. Um, I'm gonna open the floor, whether you wanna write it in the chat. Um, uh, we have about seven or eight minutes left here. If you wanna write it in the chat or if you wanna unmute yourself um, and ask the question, we're here for you, uh, so I'm just gonna leave it open for a couple more minutes. Now I'll share back so that we have the nice screen at least on here for all of us. All right. Would you be willing to come out and do a demo with a patient? Um, Carlos, really uh, great question there. Um, what we actually offer right now, um, for our doctors there is a way uh, clinics, low vision therapists, um, anyone who's working in a, in a medical facility, we do have a way to get a device on site. Uh, and we do training remotely, especially right now during COVID. Uh, we also send out devices directly to patients for a small fee that, to them that covers the cost of shipping and our training. Um, and then if you are in an area with one of our representatives, um, we have limited representatives right now uh, in certain areas in the United States, and in Canada, um, but if there is uh, a way to organize a demo day with some of our distributors as well, we'd be happy to look into that. Um, I'd just love for the team, if possible, you know, to uh, Crystal or Tucky, if you can just throw in um, some of our contact info or at least my contact info into the chat uh, to get something like that organized, be happy to answer there. So um, I really want to take this time um, to thank everyone for joining um, our presentation here. Um, it's really great to have all of you on here. Uh, the only way that we're going to grow and help more people is by all of you taking this first step to seeing uh, what we are up to. And just a huge thank you once again to Dr. Gartner and to Charles for joining us. Um, if you do have questions, uh, we're going to stick around. But for everyone else, we thank you so much for your time. Um, this is absolutely fantastic and I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. Thank you, Jordan. Jordan. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Dr. Lawson just had one quick question uh, for anyone who's still around. What would the cost for a consumer to demo the unit see and how long is the demo period? Great question. Right now uh, across North America, we charge $99 US. Uh, and the demo period is about seven days long. Um, we classify it as about five business days. 
Uh, we work with the individual for at least one call, if not two or three, to ensure their success with the device. So it isn't just to ship it and leave it. We still have that human connection to make sure that you're set up with the device, you feel confident in your abilities, and that we're evaluating your uh, success with it, whether it's lines of improvement and facial recognition or goal-oriented um, uh, approach where we're making sure they're achieving their goals by the end of that trial period. My pleasure, Dr. Lawson. All right. Well, thank you everyone once again. Um, and uh, we hope to see you all soon. I hope uh, to hear from many of you as well. So have a great rest of your day and speak to you all soon.